Hey, greetings again, and welcome to uh, yet another obnoxious episode of Crank Page Babani Dushy. Today, uh, we're ascending in elevation once again in the mountains of Northern California. You can see uh, we got the uh, remnants of a nice uh, wildfire here. There's a lot of them lately. There's just too many fucking people everywhere. Some of them are caused by lightning. A lot more are just caused by jackasses, of which, of course, there are many uh, in this country these days, okay, especially those, you know, fucking clowns that don't want to wear masks because they think their rights are being infringed upon, it's pretty hilarious, you know, it's the things that people complain about, first world fucking problems, okay, anyway, uh, stepping across the road over here, you can see we got the pretty bad invasive plant, this is yellow star thistle, okay, real pain in your ass, okay, I believe it came from uh, Europe or Asia, okay, and it's uh, pretty much naturalized here, Okay, and it uh, yeah, it just outcompetes native plants and dies, uh, and it also you know proves to be uh, an incendiary you know, when it does die. It's you know come come August or September, this plant will be brown and crispy, and just another invasive plant that uh, dots the road size and also goes goes up in flame uh, somewhat readily. But over here we got a really cool native plant, somewhat common and somewhat hard to grow in cultivation too. It's uh, this is Aerodictyon. Uh, A.K.A. Yerba Santa. Okay, there's quite a few species in the genus Aerodictyon. Cecilifolium down in Baja, California is one of my favorites. It's got sessile leaves and they're very glandular and sticky and the leaves smell absolutely incredible. Okay, this used to be in the family Hydrophilaceae, but it's now been merged into a Varaginaceae. This is another plant sometimes, uh, you know, I'm, obviously I'm not much of a woo-woo uh, making potions guy, but there's another plant sometimes that if I'm sick, I will take a couple of leaves and just make a nice tea. They're good for a nice, you know, a nice natural throat coat, okay? It's very soothing on a sore throat or if you got a bad cough. So maybe if you get the Rona because some, you know, some puke wasn't wearing a mask uh, and it was standing, you know, too close to you at the grocery store and he breathed on you, you got Miss Rona, okay? You got Miss Rona, you're coughing, you're, you're hacking, and uh, maybe this will help you, okay? It's not going to save you from dying. If, uh, you, you know, you got the genetic look of the draw or you're old or whatever the fuck, but, uh, <laughs> not to get too dark here. I'm sorry. What do you got to say? It's a fucking, it's bleak outside. I'm being a little misanthropic. Okay. I just, some of the people that I just come to, to encounter, just the randos that I encounter in public in my daily life, just fucking blow my mind. I just find myself so repulsed. Okay. Uh, it just 21st century America is really a fucking piece of work here. But uh, I'll, I'll try not to di digress too much. So there you go. Aerodictyon. Really cool genus. Hydrophilaceae is the family. It's now in Boraginaceae. Uh, when it's flowering, uh, you know, you got these beautiful purple flowers, these these cymes that come up. Uh, it's, it's gorgeous when it's flowering, too. These plants are small. You know, this plant, I've seen it 10 feet tall sometimes. And it's, like I said, it's hard to grow. It's hard to grow, a, you know, in a cultivated setting. But you put it somewhere where it's hot full exposure to sun and this thing thrives okay but uh, you know in cultivation they i don't know why i think they just they're one of those plants that just rots really easily if they get too much water look at that fucking poison oak too Ugh. start growing more of that planting them around shopping malls it'd be a nice project for you all right here we go moving on up the mountain so you know on those days when you're rolling around like a dog in your own misanthropy and you're just kind of disgusted with uh you know the rest of the, the human world it's always just a good idea just you know maybe instead of having a cocktail just to you know come out to a place like this if you can afford to and just get as far away from everyone else as possible okay there's just a lot of uh somewhat wretched toxicity out there and if you happen to identify a couple plants where you're out in a place like this all the better you know you can see a pilot knob over there that little uh basically just the plugs the plug of an old volcano I've been up there before. It's pretty nice. Lots of basalt columns. Lots of uh, columnar basalt. So uh, anyway, stepping across the road over here, I want to show you this plant. Pretty pretty interesting guy right here. We got a Fraser, species of Fraser in the gentian family. This is Fraser albicollis, variety Nitida. Nitida, however you want to pronounce it. Latin's a dead language. You can pronounce it however the fuck you want. Okay, you should hear the way some of my... Uh, Mexican friends pronounce it. It sounds completely different pronounced in Spanish than it does in a, my own dirty English. So you can look at that flower. Beautiful purple flowers. Four petals, four anthers. And uh, if you get super close, you can see those nectaries. Bunch of basil leaves. 
with uh, just a little hint of a white margin on the edge growing on a hundred million year old marine sediments. Basically just old oceanic uh, mudstone and sandstone. And then looking over here you could see oh, it looks like some uh, Themidaceae. Oh, it's got seeds in there. Look at those uh, phytomelanin pigments in the seeds. Those black seeds. Got a nice uh, coyote man right there. Look at that. Monardella. Odoratisma. Mint family Lamiaceae. Smells pretty good. Look at those verticillasters. Notice just the... Look at all the ciliate hairs on the margins of those bracts. How many flowers you got in there? Probably 20 or 30? 20 individual flowers? Look at all the hairs. God, it smells good. The leaves of this smell good. Opposite leaves, like so many members of the Lamiaceae. Like, oh, I believe all members of the Lamiaceae, the mint family, got the opposite leaves. Nice Castilea. Look at that. That's heartwarming. You see that? Do you see what they're doing there? Huh? How's that for an inspirational poster? Okay? We'll get that frame. You can hang it above your desk at work. All right? If you ever go back when quarantine's over, you know? But since uh, the U.S. was too stubborn to shut down properly, it uh, looks like quarantine might be extended a little while. Huh? That's going to be my Christmas card to the rest of the country this year. I just love having them. It's really unfortunate George Carlin died when he did. You know? Because he would have had a lot to say about this. It's pretty tragic. Oh, there's one more plant I want to show you over here. Check this guy out. Look at this. Silene Campanulatum. Look at that. <whistles> Karyophyllaceae. Look at that. Pendant flowers. Okay, there's quite a few silenes. There's some really impressive ones. Silene Salmonacea. Okay, there's one in, uh, there's one in Utah. Silene Peter Petersonii. But, uh, this is, yeah, this is still something else. You can see on a, on a stem. Let's glance and hairs. And, uh, you know, like many uh, Karyophyllaceae, you got the three styles in there. Anyway, there's there's one more plant over here I want to show you real quick. Actually, there's a couple, okay? You get your uh, sulfur buckwheat Areogonum umbilatum, okay? That's a buckwheat if you ever seen one. That's a nice one. I mean, I love all of them. They're all pretty cool. They're all pretty weird, okay? Very, very interesting and weird flower structures. You can see that the umbel right there just composed of dozens of tiny little flowers. Just forming a nice little mat. It's a perennial. You get some nice woody tissue down there. Over here you got Penstemon dustus, the rock Penstemon, still going off. A little late for this guy though. A little late in the year for him to still be, a little late in the season for him to still be going off. Look at that, just your own little uh, wildflower garden right there on the uh, Right there on the uh, edge of this escarpment, this little rocky escarpment. Oh, yeah, here's another nice one. Campanula prenanthoides. Some people place this in the genus uh, Asinuma now. So this, this plant is in the same order as sunflowers, but in a different family. Campanulaceae, same family as Lobelia, if you know Lobelias at all. You got a lot of fucking weird lobelias in Chile. Really cool ones. Monster lobelias. There's that flower. You can see those uh, petals are strongly recurved. Look at that three-lobed style. That tri-lobed uh, stigma up there at the top of that style. Leaves almost look kind of like a Brichelia. She's a member of the Asteraceae. Okay. Not much of a petiole. Serrate leaf margin. Kind of like a square stem almost, which is pretty odd. Again, I, I still just call this Campanula, but uh, it is in a different genus now. Campanula of getting being these, uh, the bell flowers. You get some nice Areophyllum, Asteraceae, of course. No, you know, that's... <laughs> Pretty obvious. Over here, you got a species in the Saxifragaceae, Heuchera. Looks like a uh, Heuchera rubescens. Tiny goddamn flowers over there. 
tiny. Let me see if I can actually get one. Yeah, there you go. It's so dainty. Ooh. It's kind of a little mat of leaves, and then it sends up that uh, a two, sometimes a three foot tall inflorescence right there. Likes the rocky habitat. It likes the rocky outcrops. There's another plant in this family called uh, Dharmara peltata that you see in, a, in the uh, waterways around here. It likes the cold running water, and it's pretty cool. Looks They call it elephant ears because the ears are about you know foot diameter. There's that, that Campanula again. The uh, rocky shaded slope. Okay, so we're at about 5,600 feet elevation. We got about, I don't know, 500 to 1,000 feet to go up. To find our target plant right here, you can see a species of sea anothis. You know, unlike uh, many of the sea anothis, this has uh, generally softer leaves. Not that uh, hard, sclerophyllous, waxy uh, leaf. This is a uh, sea anothis integerimus. This one's got, uh, look at those beautiful purple flowers. Look at this guy. Lilium. It's a lily. Ooh. Lilium Washingtonianum. Purpurescence flowers are white, but they age to a, to a uh, pinkish color. You can see it's uh, just about finishing up. Look how old those anthers are. All wrinkly and old, just about done. You got a nice style in there. And it just uh, barely some faint speckling. This all, you know, also looks like a Lilium rubescens, but Lilium rubescens, the redwood lily, the flowers tend to be more ascending and pointing upright. You can see that the uh, undulating leaves down there. Undulating succulent leaves with a bulb, uh, God knows how many inches deep into that uh, rocky talus. Oh, look at that. Another one of the 9,000 species of penstemon over there. This one with the uh, naked staminode. No beard on that staminode. That sterile stamen, that little white rod poking out of that uh, five lobed uh, zygomorphic perianth. Bilaterally symmetrical perianth. Look at the fucking. Those are some nice uh, leaves, though. Look at that. Opposite, of course. Nice glaucus, nice waxy glaucus blue color to them. The psych word green. Woo! Just had my face in this dug first. Smells pretty good. No ceiling. Okay, here we go. Keep going up. A nice vista. Look at that over there. Anyway, here's that lilium again. You can see it's uh, this is a fresher one. Has it hasn't been cooked yet. Where the fuck did the uh, anthers go? Uh, smells intoxicating. Very pleasant smell. Very soothing, huh? Kind of like a, <laughs> a 95.5 in Chicago, the smooth jazz station. Just kidding. That station used to make me want to throw up when I was a kid. My mom used to listen to it in the car all the time. The flowers don't look that large. This could be Lilium rubescens. They used to, in my experience, the petals recurve more and they tend to point up. But, uh, you know, look at it. There's a little speckling in the inside of it. The... the, the the line is not very distinct sometimes between some of these species, at least in California. Especially especially not if you're using the Jepson flora to key things out. Good luck. You might need a Xanax afterwards. There you go. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Oh. And then right next to this, right next to that lily, we got this uh, Tritalia. Looks like Tritalia crocea. Crocea. Nice yellow color, huh? Themidaceae. Asparagales is the order. Or asparagaceae. Brodea subfamily. However, the fuck that, you know, however you want to call the taxonomy on this. Okay, asparagales is a nice monocot order. Those nice striations on it, the uh, perianth right there. Look at it. Don't you like uh, don't you like the, the touch that that uh, wolf lichen adds to those trees? Over here you got the Colomia grandiflora, Polymoniaceae. This is a beautiful uh, fused, five fused petals. Again, you got those blue anthers. Look at that. And that flower, blue anthers, pretty glandular, lanceolate leaves. And then right here already, didn't even have to hike that far up this goddamn mountain. You got our target plant. Calicordis persistence. Okay, another member of the lily family, Lily ACA. This one, an extremely rare one, not only from two populations. Okay, most of them have gone to seed. You can see why it's called persistence. It's because those tepals hang on long after it's been pollinated and already gone to fruit. 
Thus the name Persistence. This population was discovered in 2007. Okay, so pretty, uh, pretty recently discovered population here. And they're just growing. Looks like, looks like a little uh, wild rock garden. Huh? Didn't even have to call the overpriced landscape architect. Okay, and they probably would have planted a bunch of tacky non-native shit anyway. Instead you get the nice sulfur buckwheats, some achillea, some yarrow, and uh, a bunch of sedums. Oh, you got some myriopterus too. A bunch of sedums, get some nice myriopterus. The sedums going. I wonder if that's a Kirstedia. And just more of that calicordus just coming up. Kind of late in the game for some of them, but this is such a beautiful, beautiful lily. Another DFL dainty fucking lily. You know, 100 million year old marine sediments. And a nice monodella. Monodella, Ariophyllum, Ariagonum umbilatum. And just the nicest little mat. Let it uh, see them again. Ah! Look at that! They're fucking huge! They're giant fucking tulips! Just the most beautiful fucking tulips out here in the middle of nowhere, out here deep in the cut. Huh? Only people coming up here, loggers. I think this is private land, too. Not that it matters. Not that I give a shit. Not that I ever give a shit, but there you go. wonder if the, uh... Look at a fucking leaf on this. One single leaf. So succulent. Ooh. Succulent and luscious. I wonder if anybody's growing this. The British love these. Huh? A lot of the British grow these bulbs. There's also the uh, Pacific Bulb Society newsletter. You could contact them and see if anybody's actually grown this. It's, uh, sell you bulbs, maybe. You go to go to one of their seminars, huh? And you like to sit in a room full of those people. Holy shit. Might get a little stuffy, huh? Make sure you eat some beans and garlic before you. Maybe you can gas them out. Light them up a little bit. Or you could dose them with the, you know, put some psilocybin in the uh, the punch bowl on the fruit platter over there. Wouldn't that be nice, huh? Take a little bit of psilocybin and just stare at that all day. Maybe you'd uh, come away knowing a little bit more about yourself. A little bit of self-insight, huh? Holy shit. I can't, I've, I've seen this, I've seen this plant, you know, probably three or four times before, mostly at the other population. But uh, this is really a fucking stunner. These are huge. I've never seen them this big before. God damn. So this this one's it's a nest. It's old. The anthers have already fallen off, but uh, and the petals are just about to to be done too. But uh, you could you could see the morphology more clearly. You got the nice tepals down there, more lanceolate, and you got the petals much wider. The petals, of course, have that uh, those hairs on them. You got nectaries down there too. Those hairs probably you know they probably are a combination of. Uh, their purpose, rather, well, not their purpose, their adaptive benefit is, you know, a combination of, you know, manipulating a pollinator behavior, getting them to dance around those stamens, as well as maybe uh, helping retain some of that nectar once that, uh, because that perianth is closed up when they're in full bloom. But you got, you got flowers in all different stages of bloom, right? here. You got some that are going off, some that are just starting, some that are well past done, the fruits maturing. Pretty robust population. And then there's that damn sedum again. Always a charm. Always a charm to see. Huh? Just like a taco truck. It's always a charm to see a taco truck. At least me. Even if I'm not hungry, it soothes me a little bit. You know? I know I'm in a place where there's not going to be many Karens around. Okay? And that's really, demographically, that's what's fucking important to me. Okay? And to be around the you know, people that are maybe a little bit more pleasant. And you get tacos. How about that? Yep, yep, Karen doesn't like the taco trucks. Doesn't want to see the taco trucks. Don't know what's wrong with her. Anyway, look at this species of Rigoran. Oh! That's a nice one right there. Get up close. Would you check out those leaves? Look at the, uh, those hairs on them.
just about done. There's that sedum again, just like a little mint, just crawling over like a little succulent carpet on these, uh, these rocks right here. Poor Karen. White minority. How many people heard that Black Flag song, White Minority, and didn't catch the sarcasm, huh? If you didn't catch the fact that it was sung by a Puerto Rican, maybe you caught the tone of it being a little facetious. You never know, though. You never know. Don't want to give people too much credit. It's everybody's favorite root parasite, the genus Aphalon, Orobankaceae. So glandular. Ooh. The zygomorphic flower right there. A nice yellow color. Nice little, uh, Darker striations on her, still going off. Hey! Can it! No, come here! Hey! Oh you little shit. You're not, hey, you're not getting any pepperoni, you little shit! Listen to me, goddamn! I've had enough of this! Okay, you, you gotta forgive me. I was being a bit lazy and not looking closer. I was uh, somewhat full of shit. These aren't uh, metamorphosed marine sediments. These are metamorphosed volcanics like this greenstone, which is basically just a weakly metamorphosed uh, form of basalt. So these are basically, these are pre-Cenozoic uh, metamorphosed volcanics. Metavolcanics, if you want to be fancy with them. So they're basically volcanic rocks that are quite old, pre-Cenozoic, so pre, uh, you know, 66 million years ago. And uh, they've also been, in that time, they've been uh, apparently cooked again, metamorphosed. Cooked, i.e. metamorphosed. And this is what Calicordus persistence is growing on. You can see there's just, I can't get over how many of them there are. I've probably seen a hundred of these just in my little uh, jaunt just up that ridge. It, with Jack, he said, apparently uh, wants to go back. I don't know. Maybe he wants some pepperoni or something. But we're not going back anytime soon because this is a fucking beautiful place. This is my safe place. Just incredible. What a nice, uh, I'm coming, huh? Can't get over that. It's the fucking rare. Only only two populations of this in the world. Only know from two places in a whole goddamn world. Who knows when it evolved? How many millions of years ago? And I believe the separation between the two populations is maybe like 30 miles or something. Maybe not even that. I don't know. But there's just so many. You can see they're just coming up in these little clearings in the forest. And we are at about 6,000 feet now. You know, but I, we could be a little bit higher. To be honest, I have not gotten the ass work on that I've been looking for. You know, working on those glutes. It's just, <laughs> just fucking such a beautiful little. And again, yeah, there's some that are just finishing up. Oh, look at that ovary. Go swollenovaries.com. The anthers are still on there though, but it certainly does look to be pounded. See how swollen that ovary is. Still got the anthers on there. The nice yellow hairs, too. Just coming out of the talus. There's one that didn't flower this year. For whatever reason, didn't get enough juice. Didn't get enough, uh, wasn't able to photosynthesize up enough carbs, enough sugars. Persistent uh, petals and sepals. Oh, there we go. It's just, it's just a tiny guy. Yeah, I have not. The other population of this is above the town of Wairika, which is indeed kind of a shithole. And uh, it looks nothing like this. Just nowhere near as many plants. More of that Colomia, Polymoniaceae. No homicidal thoughts here. Here's that aphalon again. Everybody's favorite root parasite. Got a nice cream color. Nice creamy color to it. Sulfur buckwheat. More of that lilium, you know, but if it's Washingtonian, I normally Washingtonian can get upwards to like eight feet tall. Guess it all just depends on the rain. And it was kind of a shitty precipitation year this year. Oh, look, the aphids are already getting you're already getting at it. Look at that. Gotta just uh, wipe them off, just crunch them like peons under my thumb.
Hello, my love, I heard a kiss from you. Red magic sat then playing near to. Oh, to the morning rain, I guess. The rain don't shine. Rainbows and waterfalls running through my mind. That's my own version of the, the Brothers Johnson Strawberry 23. It's not a very good song, but it's been stuck in my head. So uh, hopefully it's stuck in your head too, and you can suffer along with me. Look at this nice uh, looping I got going on. How about that? Like these, these climbs, you know? I like these climbs, they're good for your glutes. Monadella everywhere. And more uh, persistence. Do you like the Brothers Johnson? Were they a little too funky for you? You know? <laughs> it really is. It's a painful song. Oh, look at it. You got one going off. One finishing up, and one that's uh, just getting ready to bang off right there. And more of that penstemon. I can't get over how fucking robust this population is. It really is. Uh, look into my perianth. Oh, look at that. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. You got to forgive me, you know. It's been it's been a while. It's been a while since since I've uh, had the tiniest the uh, figment of sanity in my life. Yeah, I'm finishing up right here. Let's keep going. Ah, oh, look, it's another Colomia. What's going on? I'm starting to uh, pay attention to the Polymoniaceae, at least the uh, annual phloxes. the annual phlox family. Little. Salverform Corollas. How about those little Salverform guys? You like those, huh? Ooh. Just covered in a hairs. You like the hairs, huh? You like the hairs? It's still just Calicordus persistence. She's growing in the shade. You know, normally the lilies need more sun. I guess uh, that is a rule of thumb, but they tend to like a little bit more exposure. Oh, look at that Basilia. Is that Hastata? Always a pleasure to see this. Okay, before it sends up the... Uh, the flower, this little rosette, those very prominent, uh, look at all the hairs in the goddamn leaves too, with those very prominent uh, veins. Nice logging tractor came true here. Probably when the, the calicordus were dormant though. There's that fucking colonia again. Nice logging tractor. Logging, providing jabs. Beefboys.com. How many gay? How much gay porn has been uh, had a logger theme to it? Probably, an, probably a lot. Not enough, at least as far as I'm concerned. Woo! Is it another member of the Carol Phylaceae? The Phylaceae Pseudostellaria Jamesiana, huh? Jamesia. Yeah, you like cannolis at all, huh? Do you like cannolis? If you don't, you're a prick. Everybody likes cannolis, right? Just, uh, just basically sweetened cheese. And fried dough. It's about as as far as Italian food goes. It's about as heinous as you can get. Yeah, I just mean in terms of health. Very delicious food. I don't know why I just thought of a cannoli right now, but that's what I think of when I look at this plant. Got nice opposite leaves. Caryophyllaceous bastard. Look at those prominent sepals. It looks looks you know almost kind of weedy. Like if you saw it coming up on the side of your driveway, you know, you might just go eh. But uh, I don't know. I like still like seeing it. You know, it gives me an opportunity to run my mouth about some. Uh, it ain't nonsense again. All right, let's keep going. Here we go. Oh, look, it's verbascum. Mullen. Brought in by the uh, logging trucks. Like it so often is. Pretty bad invasive. Mm -mm, but you can smoke it. You can smoke it and it's good. It's so grounding. It's just, I feel so grounded when I just touch this plant. I just, you know, I smoke it. It's good for tinctures. And, and I'll put this in my ass sometimes. It's very calming effects. It's a, it's a nervine, whatever that means. It, uh, it's an ally to my nervous system and my kidneys. It's good for the kidneys. And then sometimes I'll mix it with some uh, uh, Amanita muscaria or Velosa. And uh, sometimes I'll... Uh, you know, just kind of keel over and puke. Oh, look at that. You got some ladybugs in there, too. Always the one to encourage people to rip this plant out. Okay? Because it just, it really takes over. And, uh, you know, some people claim it's not invasive unless there's a prior disturbance. But I beg to differ. It's, at least in the forest, and especially in the Pacific Northwest, further you get up, up north, you see this plant just taking over. All right? And it just, the plantaginaceae is the family. I'm sure it's lovely where it's native. Here it's a real pain in the ass, though.
Real nice uh, Colomia grandiflora right there, again with those blue anthers, which so many plants in the Phlox family have. Look at that. Look at this fucking massive inflow with the bracts. Oh, more flowers. Cause you can see more flowers coming out in the center. Okay, so this thing will be overall, you know, the flowers down here will be uh, senescing around the time those ones in the center, those little just white dots are uh, doing their thing. And again, five fused petals, salverform corollas, the trumpet shape, tubular salverform corollas with the blue anthers. Colomia grandiflora. Oh, well, I guess it's just a day for the Phlox family, isn't it? Ipomopsis aggregata. One of the scarlet gilias. Oh, that's nice right there. Look at the little red firecrackers. Huh? Much more soothing than the 4th of July. My neighborhood sounds like a fuck. It sounds like fucking Fallujah 2005. Holy shit. You know, people just blowing shit up. Yeah, I get it. It's fine. You know, better there than out, out here. Better in the big shitty city than out here. This is always a stunner. By no means rare, but always a banger to see. Again, silver form Corollas, five fused petals. You know what the fuck I'm going to say? You know what I'm going to say? Polymoniaceae. Really on one today. I got a little, I did good. Left the country for a little while. Look at this erisimum. Left the country for a little while. Toned down my caffeine intake. And now it's just right back up. Huh? And I'm just ready to go tell the world to go fuck itself. And, uh, you know, get a little turned up. Sometimes you get a little aggro. Okay, that's fine. Okay? Better than being too soft. Okay? But you gotta know again. You gotta know when to be soft. You're doing it. It's important to be soft sometimes. You gotta be soft. Look at this nice blue color in it, Castellet. Not bluish, but you know, more of like a lime green, like a mint green, like a chalky mint green. All those red bracts that aren't actually petals, just red bracts subtending the actual flower. And then the actual petals are right there, those tiny, much tinier than those red bracts. Just pollinator attractants, it's all part of the game. Oh, Calicedrus the currens, the incense cedar. I've planted a few of those out illegally in Oakland, but they just, uh, they do well, you know, but I don't think they like the fact that the winters don't get that cold. It's a tree that really benefits from uh, freezing winters. You know, you could grow that in Chicago. You could grow that in Chicago. You could grow that in Crook County. I got one planted in Crook County. It's about 10 feet tall right now. Calicedrus decurrens, the incense cedar, Redwood family, Cooper Sacier. Oh, yeah, sugar pines. You ever call somebody sugar pine? You, maybe a courtship display, look at that, five, another five-needled pine, one of the white pines, five needles per fascicle. This one kind of looks like shit, maybe just because there's been so much logging here. Lagging, it'll yeah, give you a lag. Well, you could look at it, you could look at the cones here. You ever upper decked anybody, huh? Why don't you type, well, leave me in the comments, not the last time you upper decked somebody, for those of you that have. But make sure it was someone who deserved it, okay, because it's a really harsh uh, trick to play on someone who doesn't deserve it, you know. Dropping a deuce in the upper tank. Anyway, here's those cones. Here's an old one. Pinus Lambertiana, the sugar pine. That's that's not even as big as they get. They, they get almost twice that long. You know, and the seeds, of course, like all pine seeds, are edible. And uh, and I've grown a couple of those too. But you know, all the pines are mycorrhizal, ectomycorrhizal. So uh, probably AM. Uh, Fungi too, probably a, a muscular mycorrhizal as well. But uh, you know, I've, when I've grown these before, they don't, they don't, they don't take off. They're slow, and I think it just is a matter. Once you put them in the ground, it's just a matter of uh, whenever they, their roots finally get that fungus they need to thrive. The area is looking very, uh, very lovely tonight. Yeah. I, 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 okay, so you can see the uh, Calicordis uh, persistence is uh, just popping right back up. You, we went through some shaded forest. There wasn't that much, and then. Back when in the, uh, you get to the openings, the clearings in the forest. So the logging, actually, the disturbance benefits it a little bit. But what really used to be going on is intermittent fires. But due to fire suppression, it's, uh, you know, obviously, that's, fire suppression's a problem. Smokey the Bear's an asshole caused a lot of problems in uh, in the American West. But that's a whole other subject I can't really get into right now. It takes too fucking long. And I talk too much already. So, you know, you, the point is you want, uh, you know, relatively frequent low burning wildfires instead of 
you know, these massive wildfires every 80 years. And that's what's going to happen. They're inevitable. When you suppress fires for so long, those fires are going to happen no matter what. doesn't matter if you've got defensible space or what. So anyway, right, let's look uh, Let's look here. Let's, uh, let's do a little expose on the uh, nectaries here. Let's get up close and personal with that nectary right there. And that nectary is basically a little strip that occurs in between uh, that those that the fuzz right there, that, the, that fringe. If I can actually get this off, maybe I could show you but that's what that's what it gets the pollinators in there and that fringe of course those all those little hairs prevent the nectar from evaporating uh, again like i said they also you know manipulate the pollinator behavior around that flower but uh, but it seems like probably first and foremost they prevent that the uh, that nectar from just evaporating in the heat those little nectar secreting glands right there right in between those uh Right in between those two uh, layers of fringe. Okay, so one of these flowers had already been pollinated, but this uh, petal was still on there. So I went ahead and ripped it off, you know, for the, uh, for the uh, interest of science. So you can see right there I got this petal bent back, and I got those two uh, little fringed membranes split right open. And right in, right in there is the nectary, okay? And these, these do not produce large amounts of nectar, but you don't need that much. Just a little bit of that... Uh, sugar water, essentially sugary syrup, uh, to get those uh, insects in there pollinating them. But you can see right in there, that's the uh, that's the lure right there. You know, and every species of Calicortis does that. Every species of Calicortis, as far as I know, has nectaries, has nectar factories, and produces nectar to get those pollinators in there. How is she going to do it? You know, but some orchids, of course, rely on sexual deception and, uh, Basically, you know, mimicry of other flowers, etc. So orchids can be cheap, but not calicortis. Orchids can be cheap with their nectar, but not calicortis. Calicortis provides. It's crazy. Look at that tiny little membrane right in there. Little nectar factory. Who? Oh. All right, yeah, I take it back. I've been making fun of Caryophyllaceae. I shouldn't. It's actually a pretty cool family. And I've been making fun of, but well, I never made fun of Silent too much. Just the... Just the tiny caryophyllaceous passage. Here's Silene gray eye. Look at that. That's kind of a stunner, huh? Very heavily glandular. And look at that calyx, too. That calyx is... Ah! Oh, just striped, huh? Circus striped. A little bowling pin calyx. Let's get a money shot of that, though. Ah, oh, that perianth. Three styles. Yeah, basal leaves. Basal leaves with a little scape that comes up. You got some carline leaves, too. Just can't get over how glandular it is. There, there you go. There's a, Apparently, this guy did not get pollinated, this calicortis. You got calicortis persistence right next to it. Oh, smell those terpenes and volatiles. You know, you're looking at the mint family, Lamiaceae. Agastache, Agastache or Tissifolia, Agastache. Kind of sounds like an Italian dish. Just got Italian food in my mind. Uh, you know, because I guess I miss pre-pandemic times when I go to the old man cafe in Berkeley. And, uh, you know, just uh, they'd be they'd all old people there. Old people, you know, occasional schizophrenic. And I would just go sit there and read, maybe get a cup of coffee, 9 p.m. at night, eat a cannoli, maybe some chicken parmesan. I had some real nice chicken parmesan. I miss those days pre-pandemic. That's about, you know, one of the only things I miss about the the time, about life before the, the COVID, you know. <laughs> I like the shutdown, to be honest with you. I like it. I think it's good for us. Anyway, here you go. It smells very, very wonderful. You got the opposite leaves again, and you got a square stem. Not everything in Lamy AC is a square stem, but a lot of stuff does. Oh, oh it smells so good. The terpenes and the volatiles. Oh, yeah. Oh, Circle Carpus Betuloides. Not a very tall one, but uh, it does it does look like it's got uh, birch leaves on it. Nice fuzzy uh, underside. Look at it. Just growing on this uh, rocky outcropping. Rocky and bare outcropping with the penstemons, the Ariagonum umbilatum. And of course the Calicordus persistence. And it's been nice. It's been a treat. Feel a little bit better? Yeah. Calm the fuck down a little bit. If you don't think about the 
hitting your boss with a board anymore. It's a nice flex though. Those hairs go all over the margins. Ooh. Holy shit, it's getting windy, it's getting cold. We are up at 6,500 feet. I'm gonna wrap this up. Oh, that's pretty nice. That's nice, you like that? Yeah. All right, well, that's all I got for you tonight. Don't you uh, patronize your nearest taco truck, huh? Bike Karen a burrito, she needs it. Lord knows she's fucking miserable. All right, that's all I got for you tonight. Take care, go fuck yourself, bye.